So today, tomorrow, we are going to we are going to talk about visual design and navigation and layout and text and these kind of elements that will be are already central with the paper prototype and they will become even more central when you will need to insert colors and these other elements going forward and as always before doing that let's waste 10 minutes well let's dedicate 10 minutes to this so i suppose you know what is this start off so in particular what it's on the screen of this watch what is this yes applications um it's it's the menu right it's the menu of the apple watch okay so you you know the the game so pros and cons this is actually so is some of you as an apple watch okay not a lot of people but you three have experience so this is the original let's say grid menu that existed since the beginning of the apple watch until this year update so the, the last update removed this grid visualization as it is now hmm? so but just have a look at this pros and cons Yeah, they are too close each other and more than too close they are also too small because if they were very large but close that it's not difficult right to to get it right so there could be a risk of errors because they are small and they are also small because of the screen is small anything else so yes that's one thing that is in the pros and the cons the cons okay there is a suitable icon for each other this is a pro yes yes there is a good level of uh, uh, similarity between the smartphone icons and the smartwatch icons and so if you learn one in one place you sort of recognize the other in the smartwatch and this is a pro yes Yes, they are different sizes uh, because how these things work is that uh, it's so the biggest are in the center and then they move they are smaller and you can navigate these either moving the screen up and down or left and right so there is a space that is always uh, you can move the space around and as soon as the icon becomes closer to the center of the screen they becomes bigger so this is small but if you scroll down this becomes bigger so that's how it works how it worked until a few months ago something else yes there are no names and this is a pros and cons yeah typically it's true typically icon plus text wins with respect to just icon or just text yes you have to use it to understand that you can click on this very very small icon here and that's it but you know also the screen is small so it's there is not and there are like two buttons so it's not a lot of options but yeah you have to to try but this is, is good for in another perspective because you try but there is nothing that can be broken you can always go back and there is no uh, destructive action there is no need to undo anything because you can move freely in the space 
So exploration, so that is, um, that is pretty good uh, from that perspective. So let's summarize the cons. The absence of text and small icons that can um, um, include errors and the layout that is particular with small icons. Do you think anything else about this? Yes, there is no, you said categorize, and it's correct. There is no ordering, which is the order here. It's apparently random. One can rearrange this, but there is no logical order. It's either personal order, it's a random order by default, etc. So yes, it's a lack of ordering that is close with the uh, absence of labels to better specify what is an icon. And, um, and yeah, so there is another thing that is connected to the, to these other, the last two things you, you said. Yes. It's difficult to find the app you want. Not a, not a random uh, app because it, that is easy to find, but it's, since there is no ordering and they're small and they change um, uh, size while moving, it's also the first glance difficult to find the app you're wanted. So for instance, uh, so here there is the reminder app, just here, and it's barely visible. And so when you look at uh, on your uh, wheels, and uh, you see all these icons and you have to move around and maybe that it's here, but you just miss it because there are many other icons around, there is no ordering, etc., etc. How we can fix these problems? So actually this has also some advantages, including the fact that uh, you, if you remember the fits law, this is very optimized for the fits law because all the icons, so if you know where the icons are, there is minimum space if you want to go from uh, the, the timer to messages, they are very, very close, even if one is timer, so order it alphabetically will be under the T and the other will be under the M. So there will be very distance in a linear order, but not in this case in a circular menu. So there are also advantages on the position, etc. but clearly there are drawback like the, the absence of labels and the small icons, etc. and these icons that be, becomes big and small, etc. So how can we solve it? And actually how Apple solve it? Because they solve it in two ways. Sorry? With navigation. With navigation meaning? Creating a linear menu. Creating a linear menu. Like this one. Right? So that is one thing. You can create a linear, a list of application instead of, and it's one option that actually you have. If you have an Apple Watch, you can choose between the two visualizations. And you can also get the, the linear version with labels, bigger icons, and order because it's alphabetical order. The other option that is not visible, so who has an Apple Watch should know, could know. Because, and if, they up, if you update it to the lastest operating system, you can know. Because this is not here anymore, like this. There is something similar, but it's not identical. People with Apple Watch doesn't update the phone. There's the smartwatch. So now there is no more uh, this kind of different small, different uh, size of uh, icons. And uh, with the button on the right, uh, you can uh, scroll, but just like a list of icons. And, uh, 
Yeah, so they remove the horizon horizontal scrolling and you just have the vertical scrolling. So icons are more or less in this shape. Actually, I think they are a little bit bigger, the others. And uh, you cannot scroll horizontally anymore, just vertically. And this small icon remains, but they remain because when you scroll down, it's like, oh, there is more in the next page. So you scroll down, they come up and becomes big almost immediately. So there is no free, uh, it's still up to you, the organization, it's still no text. They are a little bit bigger than before, but there is no one, all, one direction of uh, searching that is the vertical direction and not anymore all the direction as before, before you can navigate freely in the space. Right, left, top right, you can move it as you want. Now the scrolling is just top to down and, and bottom to, to up like a linear menu. So this wasn't particularly good. It was a, some good idea behind, like the uh, allowing you to have the order you prefer, but also some drawbacks. And so you, now you have options like the linearist. And also this is now a uh, improved version with less of this trouble. So, and I, I clearly next year we'll need to remove it because otherwise nobody will have any more experience with that but okay this is also related to you know visual design because this is a choice of visual design how to represent items menu item on a screen in a list with icon with text with both and i told you and just i don't think it's in the slide but typically it's proved that a menu with icon plus text is more is easier to use and more efficient to use than just the same menu with icon or text so an icon only text only menu typically is worse as usability efficiency etc than a menu that has both icon and text hmm? because it's allow more to recognize more not only the icon but also the text and you can combine both of the element in the recognition okay so let's talk about visual design so visual design let me start with this visual design is not about uh, being good uh, drawing or making art hmm? there are two separate yet connected uh, skill hmm? so what is about visual design visual design is about guiding pacing and messaging so guiding means conveying structure conveying importance relationship consistency familiarity all things we also mentioned in the design principle it also means pacing so again orienting people within the application so in one screen how can i proceed to the next one which are the elements that are active and the ones that are not active in a visual way, clearly, because it's about visual design. And also messaging, so expressing the meaning, the style of your application for your specific target population and for your specific uh, usage, context of use. Again, if we do a, a recipe application, for children and for university students or for uh, the elderly then maybe the guiding and the pacing will be similar but the style will be different because maybe it will be more playful for children than for people who are older than children and yes also if possible we can try to make it all these things aesthetically beautiful but that's not the main goal that's one consequence and if we are good at it it's better if are not it's probably still fine hmm? so connected to this artistic skill are helpful in some cases but are not necessary or sufficient to do that hmm? because uh, visual design needs to be practical needs to apply principle needs to guide to 
to give direction, to give consistency, etc. And not only, or not, to give a sense of art that is important, can be important, but is not the main goal of visual design. Mm -hmm. And also as a disclaimer, visual design skills takes year, in many cases, to master completely. And you are doing some kind of visual design already with your paper prototypes. Uh, so this lecture and also the lecture of tomorrow, together with the design principle we are seeing, is a way to having a good start, an easy start for you. And then clearly, if you practice more, you will become better uh, at, the, at doing this. But just to have a good starting point to create something that is good enough to proceed that's the the goal of this lecture and it's also the goal of the design principle we have seen and also will be the goal of the heuristics you will see before the heuristic evaluation that again will guide you help you in making some design decision not only visual but design decision in a little bit more generic scale so wait I'm going to show you, and look here, one screen for, let's say, five seconds, right? And then I'm going to, tell, to ask you what's the text about, okay? And don't cheat, don't look on the slide, just look here, five seconds. Okay, what's the text about? Which are the main topic of the text? People design? Visual, visual, well, visual design, okay. Spacing. Spacing. Guiding, guiding attention. It was about text? Color? Color. Layout? Alignment. Maybe, alignment. But you, you don't have, right, a, a clear vision of that so that text was about all of these things but some were more let's say important in that text than others so let's talk about the basic of visual design so and let's use this text that has more or less the thing you you mentioned but not all with the same level of priority uh, that is this text one right so it say a few things but it's hard to get the main points of it. Because you can get and uh, remember some words here and there. And so this is better at the first sight or not. She say yes. Anybody else? Yes. 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 Why is better? Because it's divided in section. section. And you immediately recognize that there are how many items in the other? Four. How many items are here? You have to count. There's still four, but you have to count, right? So immediately, as a matter of visual design, and, and we are speaking mostly about text now, clearly, uh, spacing as a huge. This is just the same text as before. What is changing is that there is white space, in this case, black because the background is black but there is space between sentences and that immediately give you an idea that there are four items in this sentence so if you have a long block of text in your application in your website etc space it's a good starting point to consider space between the elements give space between the text give more room to immediately get how the things are. Is this better or worse to get the content? What is this text about? Now, tell me which are the three main things that this text is about. Text, layout, and colors. And you can say the same from here at the first sight? No. 
So white space clearly help. Here there is white space, but there is hierarchy. So we will see tomorrow that, um, well, I can ask you and then I can tell you the, the answer. So how much do you think people read on the web, for instance? A lot, a little, it depends. reading like I have this you are on a website and you see something like this are you going to read it the title and how much you will read of this just three text alert and colors and we will see tomorrow that actually people don't read on the web so you can create a very long and crafted text with the right words, but then probably almost nobody will read it entirely. And so that's why white space and hierarchy are important, because you need to convey the information you want to, to convey in a clear way so that people can decide, okay, this is something I, I'm interested in or not. So here, if you get it immediately, you can get that this text is about text, layout, and colors. And so you can decide, okay, I'm interested in one of these three, and then I will read something more, or I don't care, next page. Hmm? So maybe I'm interested in text, and I will read these three lines. Or maybe I will be interested in layout, and I will read what is written under layout. The TLDR yes. is in which sense is good or bad? Like, I feel like people just read the only this section if they find it. So it's another way. So the two, I don't know. You are have you present what she's speaking about? No. So sometimes when there is a very long blog post or a very long message at the beginning or at the end, but most often at the beginning, there are. Uh, T, four letters, T, L, uh, semicolon, D, R, semicolon. That stand for too long, don't read. Okay? That is like a very, very short sum summary of whatever is written behind. So it's a blog post of 100 lines, and you have the short version that is one sentence that incredibly summarizes that. So that is a way to say, okay, it's too long, just to read these three lines, and if I'm interested, you can continue to read the details, otherwise don't waste time. Okay, but this is not about visual design, this is more about content. But yeah, it's a shortcut because people don't read. And so before understanding if something is, don't read on the web, not don't read in general. Uh, before understanding if it's something is something that it interests me, Maybe from the title, I can say, yes, more or less interests me. That short summary, it's a really short summary. Tell me, okay, I, I should engage with reading or just no, it's another thing. Okay, so um, we were saying hierarchy together with text uh, allow you to convey information hmm? so that you can immediately know if you are interested in going deeper. So hierarchy. And then alignment. So Again, which are the key attributes in text? White space, font, alignment. And they were here. White space, font, alignment. It's just that you needed to read every single word. And again, they were here and they were here. So it's always the same content. It just, it's just how the information are visually presented. Hmm? So, and in addition to alignment, there is also um, hierarchy, because we uh, introduce another level of hierarchy with white space, font, and assignment in bold and italic, right? So, if you get this, on screen as a slide 
you immediately or on a web page or on a mobile application you can immediately say okay this is about text layout and color in particular is speaking about white space font and alignment for text and then yes there are other properties and details but these are the key elements and again if you get this instead you will not at a glance get any of this information even if it's the same content is the same word is the same data in a way hmm? because it's again text layout and color it's just it's how this is presented hmm? so when you operate with text these are these three things to consider fonts white space and alignment and these are the three elements to consider and they make a huge difference in the information that people will get and will understand and then how many errors will do if it is our information to proceed in doing something in your application your website etc and this is about text and then clearly we have to think about layouts and about colors that are its own that have their own set of features and characteristics and in addition to that, uh, we can play with the familiarity. We already said that we, when we spoke about principle, consistency and familiarity. So given this page structure, and again, without looking on the slides, because there is the answer in the next one, which kind of web application this could be? A search engine, uh, which kind? News. News. Why you say news? Because it's like a uh, Yes, and which are the elements? Uh, images, uh, there are columns, there are images, and there is text images. Yeah. Big gray, gray container, and there is text behind that. And indeed, it was well in this case was CNN but you know if you are creating a news related website all the news related website have a similar structure to allow you to be familiar and to know how to navigate immediately without thinking too much about the content there will be image text layers etc what is this? A search engine. And why you say this search engine? Well, this is actually Google, yes. Uh, but I think if you pick DuckDuckGo or Bing, uh, it's not so different, right? Again, page structure. If you are doing a search engine, if you pick three search engines, all of them will have some structural element closer to each other again for familiarity for not to make people confused and we can continue with this game what is this yes what is email service i didn't get it sorry a site with threads Yes, but what's the purpose of the sites with threads? But it's like more question and answer or question and answer. And in particular, which, yes. And in particular, which website you think this is? Quora. No, it's not Quora. Yes? It's not Yo Groups. It's Tech Overflow, yes. But, you know, all this, uh, I would have expected a better recognizer of Stack Overflow. Uh, but, you know, all these websites, again, Quora, Yahoo Groups, have some things that make them recognizable at glance, even if you don't understand the text at all. There is a structure to say, okay, this looks like question and answer. So if I'm going to do a question and answer website, I will probably replicate the structure so that people that use Stack Overflow is able immediately 
to use my question and answer website with facility, without any trouble, because the knowledge they acquire on one website is transferable to another one. So again, consistency that was a principle in this case could be applied. Again, yes, that is TripAdvisor. That is. Hmm? Travel, hotels, etc. And if you use uh, Airbnb, then if you go in the list visualization and not in the map visualization, that will be not so different from this. Again, similarity between the various. And even if I, I present something like this to you, and many of you will not probably understand the content, but you can understand which kind of website is this. Well, it's written in the title because the title is in English, but which kind of website is this? It's a news website. Because it's, again, has the same structure than a news website. There are images, there are texts behind that, or there are small images with text on the right or on the left, so on the side. And then there are a list of other less important news, one after the other, less relevant, maybe important, but not so relevant like the others here. Okay? So, how, why we recognize these structures? Because they are all similar, but wha what is the things that tell us that this is a news website? Image and text behind, but also here there is image and text on the side, right? But why this is not a news website? Layout. Okay. Say more. Uh, uh, make an example of the organization here that is different from the news. The sidebar here. You can change things. And in a news website, you don't have it. Anything else? As filters, things you can change. Well, there is text, but there is not a lot of text. There is a small portion of text. So it's different in the elements, right, that it's used. So, and which are these elements? These are actually convention that either are official convention or became convention, right? Like, if you're going to create a web application, where will be the main navigation? On the screen. On top, typically, the main navigation will be on top. And if you're going to create a smartphone application, where the navigation will be? Yes, or behind the um, hamburger menu or on the bottom. And if you see a website with a bottom navigation, you will find it normal or strange? Strange. Because it's not a convention that we have. So website typically have the main navigation, home, about, whatever, on the top. After, like this. There is the name of the website and then there is navigation. And then maybe you have a secondary navigation on the left. Most of the time in Western produced website is on the left. It may happen on the right, but most of the time on the left. And at the bottom, you have the footer with other information, copyright, other links, contacts, etc. And this is normal, in a way, typical for all the websites, many websites. So this is familiarity that we bring, and we know that if we are looking for the copyright, it will be down the page. We don't have to, to think about it. And if you're looking for the main navigation, we will look on the top. And if it's like this one, um, um, a, a place to buy things, then we will have probably structure, right? Probably the picture with the description, and then if I click on the item, I will see 
bigger in one page with all the elements and then I can buy it, put it in the cart, in the shopping cart and the lateral navigation will be for filtering or for changing categories and that's something that we are used to. Mm? So conventional to recognize structure. Mm? The fact that the image is uh, of the news website is after, is um, above or on the right of the longer text. That's something that will help us recognize the structure. Mm? So keep in mind all of these when you are creating also your paper prototype. If your paper prototype are a website and you're going to put navigation on the bottom, that is something that will be extremely strange. Put it on the top. And think also about the other application, the other website, the other services that you use and try to find similarities between those one and the one that you are maybe creating. Maybe there are similar categories, similar device, so that you can use the convention, the structure to help users on board your application as well. Okay, this is about layout, text, white space, hierarchy, etc. There are some principles, again, but not principles like the one that we uh, mentioned the other day, but it's a psychological law uh, created by this person that's called Gestalt in 1920 that describe, we will go quite fast on this, uh, that will describe how people see things, how people see relationship between things, even if there is no explicit relationship, so that we can uh, use this principle to, well, potentially to our advantage or to our disadvantage, it depends uh, what we want to optimize for, uh, but knowing how we see things, how we process things, can also help us to create things that are in advantage to facilitating this process. And so these are sort of tricks of um, perspective that then also became best practice for design standards. And here there are some of these Gestalt principles. There are more than these. So just to have a look at some of, the, of these. So there is a principle of figure ground that say that we, since we don't like uncertainty, we look for stable items. And foreground elements catches the eye first with respect to the ground items. And this is something we probably experienced, but also something that we can use that. So if we want to put something in evidence, we will probably put it in the foreground, not in the background. Uh, or, for instance, proximity. We group closer together elements, separating them from those farther apart. So if we find things that are closer one each other, and then there is more space and another set of items, we group, we understand those things are grouped together, even if there is no border, or if there are no signs that these are grouped together. Because it's normal, it's a psychological principle that apply in this case. Mm? And we make some assumption on that as well, mm? starting from that. And uh, similarity, mm? we, we mentioned that in other way, we seek differences and similarity in an image and link similar elements. So we like certainty, we like similarity, we like consistency, again, the principle of the other day. So if you want to keep uh, everything smooth, you can build on similarity, on symmetry, on uh, consistency. And if you want to signal that something is different and you should pay attention, you can play with the opposite. Breaking similarity, breaking symmetry, breaking um, consistency, because you want to get the attention on something. So these are things you can play with, let's say, for the good, in theory, but according to what you want to um, highlight. So let's make a few examples. So what you see here, 
at the first sight? The shadow of a head and an apple. It's actually both, right? So this is a figure ground, the one that we said uh, we tend to notice foreground element first. Mm? So at the first sight, then clearly on a big projector, it could be different than seeing immediately in front of you. But here there are two items, and in theory, the one that should emerge first is the apple. And then if you look closely, then you see also the shadow of the man. And here, the, yes, I don't know even that, the things for candles, this is behind the candle. And, but there is also another thing here, two faces. And if you look at this page, this is Basecamp, this is an old website, old web page of Basecamp. Basecamp is a product for organization, task, projects, etc. What you notice first, the first things you see, the, the icon, the green thing, the, the smiley thing here. Why? It's not the biggest one, right? This is bigger. Is different from the other, and it is. It's colored, but also you know, also this is colored. It's on top. It's in foreground. You notice the things in foreground, as the principles say. Hmm? So even if there are many other things, also the same icon is here, as well. But you didn't notice it's uh, actually the same identical icon with the same identical colors. But you didn't notice at the first sight because you notice this because it's in the foreground. It's sort of in a central position. It's also color red. The rest of the page is not a lot color red, but it's in foreground. It's visible, immediately visible. So it catch our attention. Hmm? So we can play with these rules as well. If we want to catch the attention of somebody, we can put it in the foreground without creating things like complex like this, but this is the same thing. And here, which is the things you notice first? Angel list. Because again, it's, it's bigger, it's in the foreground. It's the, the biggest one that you notice. In this case, it's the biggest one. Hmm? Here, wasn't the biggest. It was just in, in foreground. This picture is actually bigger than this, right? It's way bigger than this. But we first notice this, and then we can look at the, the other thing. And now this website is different, so if you, if you look at it, probably there is no icon in foreground. But in that case, it was a, a good example of probably not the most important information you want to, to deliver, because you probably don't want to deliver that version 3 is all new in November 2016, right? You maybe want to highlight something else, like why I should use Basecamp instead of other products, but still the, thing, the first things that catch your attention is the uh, smiley uh, icon of the product, that was of the product. And this is figure ground. So similarity, let's look at this, the, the news website so how many similar things each other you notice within the page this this two here well here we can imagine there is a third one so yes, these are one set of similar things. Then, because they are similar, because they have the same color and they have the same picture. These three are similar because they are made in the same way, positioned close to each other, etc. And then there are other two similar things between them. This one? Yes. Mm. The last. Exactly. Mm. So the bigger picture with the long title, with the bigger title, 
is similar to this and what that could be <laughs> it's not yet time to go <laughs> yeah it's more important it will be the main news um, and then which is the other similarity things which headlines this one yes, yes these three items are the other similar one small picture smaller picture than the other and text behind that and we tend hmm, in con unconsciously to group these things so these three since they are similar they are part of the same part of the page and these two are big news more important news because they are made similarly and these other three are more or less the same category of things because they are done similarly mm? so similarity help us to create again consistency familiarity but also grouping things together mm? without saying this is a group there is no title that say oh the biggest one are biggest news more important news it's just something that we infer by looking at the page because everything else is structured in a way that is different and instead these two are similar and so there are immediately recognize that there is a relationship between these two kind of elements so they should be the same of, the, of a kind together hmm? so this is similarity proximity hmm? these are all separate items and you don't put them together right you you think that there are a group of items or these are separate items like the row is representing one thing or each of them are separate items these are separate items because they have enough space between one and the others right but the text and the image are linked together or not <coughs> they are and which this text is linked to which Im image why why the above because it's closer hmm? and this is again it's not written anywhere it's not that somebody taught this to us oh it's closer than it's related but we we learned and we can apply that okay continuity so let's have a look at these two examples separately mm? so clearly we look for continuity in the things so what we expect if we need to add a step here what we expect to have here step no step number four. four why because after three we expect and how we expect it to be an image with text an image is with a, a circle which color green because we expect that to be exactly as the others before and same things here what we expect if we press this arrow how many elements we expect to see one or five <laughs> What do you expect? Clearly depends. It could also be three, but who say one? And who say five? It's hard to say who said more. Uh, but yeah, you should expect five actually. Because this is page one of twenty, so if I move this, it should be one more page so five more in this case but let's say that one is a option that we consider can we expect to see three of them anyone expect to have three of them instead of one or five no why not three and one or five yes so why five because there are five and i click next and i expect to see other five why one
because I click next and I move just one item, then you don't have to write page one here, but let's say that it's not written, right? It's written showing five of 20, and then that could be and now showing six or no, the other five or some other, well, not five of 20, but something that say, I'm going to show one more now. Uh, why not three or two or four? Because? Because it's showing a group of five, so either it's the unit or uh, all the group replaced. And this is an example of continuity. And again, how do you expect this to be visually? A picture and the text that is blue and the stars and the price as the others. Hmm? So again, consistency inside the elements. Uh, well, closure, mm, it's, it's an effort of our, so we can look at the definition first, if I found it, closure. Closure is an attitude of preferring complete shape. Since we prefer complete shape, we automatically fill in gaps to perceive a complete image, and we see the whole first. So, what's written here? IBM. But this is not really a high. These are lines put together. But we recognize the eye, right? And what is here? The shape of? A heart with some sort of flower, let's say, I don't know what it is, okay. And what do you say here, see here? Two arrows, and it's also a circle, right? But actually, if you look at this, it's not really an arrow, it, it, it seems an arrow, but if you look, it's a follow of the line, it's, there are many things that are connected, etc. but we fill the gaps, and we say, oh, these are two arrows and in a circle, but this is not either a full circle nor two full arrows. It's just our mind that closed the gaps. Uh, like here also, what is this? A circle, well, mathematically it's not a circle, right? Because a circle should have uh, a complete field border. These are just segments, circular segments put together. But we say a circle because it looks like a complete circle and we fill the gap. So this could be useful not only for creating logos, but also for providing information if we want. If we want to write text, we can imagine something like IBM that is uh, a more colorful and different way to create things. Hmm? Focal point. So this is similar to the ground and figure uh, principle. So which, are, which is the things you notice first here? And the red one. And which is to you the main, the first things that the Twilio uh, creator wanted you to look at first? The buttons. Why? Because it's totally different than the rest of the page. It's red and there is no other red element in that page. And so the buttons also say get a free API key. So it's also reasonable that they want you to focus on that because it's get started with my service, get started using that instead of pointing to the documentation or the use case. Yes, you can, it's a button here, but. And here, which is the things that Instacart wants you to focus more? Which is the focal point here? The? This part here. Why? Mm -hmm. 
it's the main one it's it's centered is you know, differently from the ground and figure, these are not the only things in foreground. There are many things in foreground. Also here, there is an entire window in foreground. But it's centered, is, again, of a different color, is a little bit bigger hmm, than the free delivery or the buttons here. So this is focal point, putting something different in a different shape, in a different color, in a different size, in front, in foreground, to build of the figure and ground principle to catch the attention and to direct the attention there. Mm? And again, this could be used for, let's say, for the good or, or not, but we can imagine we want to use it for the good. Okay, so, and these are the principle uh, quickly. So, typography, let's go back to, to the text. Uh, so, well, there are various characteristics of the, of the text, including the size, the leading, uh, if it's a, a sender, the width, so if it's bold, a lot bold, a little bold, etc. And if it's a serif font or, or not. And almost all the uh, design, the frameworks for visual design, like the material design, will propose some... Uh, combination of styles, of fonts, of typography hmm, for different items. So for instance, material design say that for either of first level, the prescriptive typeface is Roboto, but it's for all of them. The weight is light, hmm, so it's, it's thin. The size should be 92, and the case should be a sentence case. So the capital letter of a word, of the first word of the sentence should be, so the first letter of the first word of the sentence should be capital and then everything else, no, like a sentence. And there should be a letter spacing of one minus 1 minus 1.5s. That means, what means a letter spacing of minus 1.5? In a different culture, there are The letters, so the spacing between the letters is minus 1.5, so they are closer than they should be. Mm? And you see, for each of them defines all the properties. Well, the typeface is the same for, for all of these in material design, but the font weight, for instance, changes. So in H3, it became so regular. And in the bottom, it will be a medium. So a little bit bolder than the normal font. Uh, and the size, change mm, so h1 is 96 point and the button is 14 instead mm. and in the button it should be all caps so not sentence case but all caps mm. and all the buttons in material design will be made with that font with that weight with that size with that case and a letter space of 1.25 so letters are more distant than the font naturally, typically prescribe it hmm, by default. <coughs> and again, all the buttons are like that for consistency, familiarity within, not only within the application that use material design, but across all the applications that use material design. Hmm? And these are things you can decide on your own, or you can use a table like this to decide. But which is the core message behind this? to you. If we need to instill, a, a distill a le lesson from this slide, what would be? Maybe importance in um, hierarchy. Yeah, the, well, importance in hierarchy is, is in the scale category, but more from a practical perspective. Okay, let me ask some question after looking at this slide. It's not written here, but that's one thing you can learn from this. How many fonts you believe you should use in one, so how many typeface you believe you should use in one single page of an application? One, two, would be five a good answer? No, good. 
So, and then that, uh, that font, that one, two fonts, can be on different size, on different weight, etc. can have different properties. And which is the other things you can learn from this? That every time you use text for an header, that should be the same text, the same properties in the text of the other header, headers. So if you put the Roboto font in the header in the first page, uh, 96 light, and then in another page you put the Roboto, but normal 55 for the same header, that's a problem. That's something you should avoid to do. So pick few stable decisions and apply them consistently again across the application. Well, in the paper prototype you cannot really because it's made uh, on paper but moving forward when you will have to insert fonts do that and similarly if the buttons have all cap all caps are written in all caps the, all the buttons are written in all caps it's not that some buttons are all caps and other buttons are lowercase hmm? there is consistency within the application so again Font size, color, spacing help to define the hierarchy, as we, uh, we said before. And the hierarchy should match the relative importance of the content. So let's have a look at these two things. They are in Italian, but um, why one? So this one is recommended, not by me, is recommended as a bad approach. And this one instead is a good approach. So why do you think this is good and this is not? So this is for getting a residency um, certificate from the municipality of Gallarate. And this is, this, is a say, this is the same text, just presented differently. Do you confirm the payment and there is the credit card number, MasterCard, uh, the validity, and who is the owner? Of the of the credit card and then you have to pay 16.52 euro and you have a tax of 0 0.5 and the total is 20 and then there are two buttons that say pay confirm and pay and cancel the payment and uh back and a question mark here for help same content so one why one is better than the other this one why is it not necessary to be bigger this is the munici name of the municipality yeah but why is it not necessary to be so big so w which should be an what this make right which should be the bigger the biggest text here this confirm the payment why because it's yeah but, but yes <laughs> it's the goal of the page it's the part of the page the page is for confirming the payment so that should be the visible information not the name of the municipality yes the name of the municipality is important to be sure that you are still paying to the right place, but the action that you are doing in this page is confirming the payment. Something else that is not good here, and so was fixed in the other one. So the name is too big. The name of the person is too big. Well, all the text is smaller here because hierarchy. So the most important thing is to confirm the payment and then all the other details are smaller because there are details and then the total is more or less big as the other because clearly the total is important for the payment and then the colors yeah. why
So yes, in this one, the payment and the header have the same color, and also the cancel is very close color here. And so this is the color of the primary action, the action that should be confirmed, the one that you want to fulfill because it's the desired outcome to confirm the payment. And so it doesn't make sense that is exactly the same color of these that by the way as a cancel here so we are associating the same color to the confirmation and to the cancel as the ground that has clearly in contrast hmm? uh, this is better because this color where there is cancel is actually the same color of this where there is cancel hmm? so the cancel button and the cancel link as the same color in the ground so this is again familiarity this is again consistency between the application and the only blue things that is the primary action if we imagine that the entire application has primary action in blue is the confirm and pay mm? so these are all positive things same text just different hierarchy different size different decision on how big the text should be also same font um, typeface and same here same information why the green one is better there are the same information in the page <coughs> so again yes it's confirming the price but if you are bu buying a home which are the main probably information that you want to consider before moving to the next house or to call the um the person the picture the price the rooms yes the rooms so let's say bathroom depend yes let's say rooms in general so these are the main information and indeed these are the biggest ones so if you have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and you immediately know okay i have that amount or i'm available to spend that amount so i can continue to read the smaller detail or can next hmm? and so if i have that amount i can look at the bed at the rooms hmm? so this is a three bedroom with two bathroom is it okay for me is not i want it bigger smaller etc i can also look at the picture but also here and then I also have the other details, how old it is, which kind of house it is, and who is the, the real estate person to contact and the contact information mm, that were also available here. Here there is also the picture of the person so that you can recognize if you go visit the home in person after calling it. So it gives you the actionable information to the side and then all the other details are smaller, you can read it, you can ask it but it gives you the information to decide whether to stay and read more and uh, uh, optionally call Tiffany or to proceed to the next house because whatever reason, too expensive, too small, too big, I don't like the color of the house, etc. Hmm? So again, same text, just a different layout from before, different sizes gives better information at the first glance. To make a decision and not create frustration not create errors etc etc okay we will continue with grids and alignments and the rest tomorrow um, if you have any question I will still be here for a couple of minutes because then I need to run to another lecture and I will upload the video lecture this evening have a good evening and see you tomorrow.